Okay, so this is the question that Kelsey was asking about in class today, um, and I've gone and found it, and this is um, this is from the 2006 NEEP trial exam, and it's it's a good example of the, of the sort of quality of questions um, that the NEEP exams are well known for. It's, it's a great question because um, it, it's taken pedigrees, which are on every exam, but it's, it's looking at it from a different perspective. Rather than showing you a pedigree and asking you to work out what the mode of inheritance is based on on the evidence in the pedigree. This one's telling you what the mode of inheritance is, and then it's asking you to, and, and then the, the situation's a little bit unusual, and it's asking you to think, um, and so it's great because it's testing your ability um, to apply what you know about pedigrees rather than just following a pattern, um, which I think is great. So notice up here it tells you that syndactyly is a rare genetic condition in, inherited as an autosomal dominant trait. So they're telling you that it's autosomal dominant. You don't have to work out that it's autosomal dominant. But they say unusually, um, however, a person who has the defective allele responsible for syndactyly, um, and notice here that they're giving you an allele symbol. Um, so we're going to use their allele symbols. We're not going to make up our own. And we're not going to use S for syndactyly. We're going to use N because that's what they've given us. But a person, so, so unusually, a person who has that defective allele does not always show the trait does not always show the trait. So that's unusual because normally if you have one allele for a dominant trait, it is expressed in your phenotype. But there are some people where that doesn't happen in this case. And then they give us an example of a pedigree. Um, and it's a multiple choice question. It says, there was no history of syndactyly in the ancestors of individuals 1, 1, 2, 1, and 2, 6. Assuming that there were no new mutations, um, it's reasonable to conclude what? And firstly, I'd like to just point out, we're saying it's reasonable. So we're, we're asked what here is reasonable, not necessarily can we prove it, but just is it reasonable? Now, first of all, they've told us there was no history of syndactyly in the ancestors of individuals 1, 1, 2, 1, and 2, 6. So here's 1, 1 here, obviously doesn't have syndactyly. So we can assume that her genotype is little n, little n. We can assume that because there's no history of syndactyly in her family. Um, and, and because syndactyly is a dominant trait, even though it doesn't show up in everybody who has who, who has the allele for it, um, nevertheless, if it's a dominant trait and there's nobody in the family who's ever had syndactyly, we can assume that she's homozygous for the recessive, the normal allele. Okay, same for 2, 1, which is this person here. We can assume that he's little n, little n, and 2, 6, this one over here. So in other words, everyone marry, what they're telling us is everybody marrying into this family is homozygous for the recessive trait. That's what they're not saying it, they're not specifically saying it, but they're giving us enough evidence to reasonably conclude that. All right, then it goes on and we have our four choices. So let's work these through. So individual 2-5 has the genotype little n, little n. So 2-5 is this, this person here. That's 2-5. Um, does this person have the genotype little n, little n, we're saying? Well, look, because this their child here has syndactyly, the child must have a big N and probably a little N. Well, it must be a little N because, because this child's father only has little N. So the father must have given this child a little N. Um, so they have a little N, but they've got syndactyly, so they've definitely got a big N, which must have come from mum. So mum's genotype must be big N, um, probably big N, little N, but she must certainly have, a, well, it must be little N because of her mum. So she must have a big N in order to pass it on to the kid. So this person here is one of those people who has the allele for syndactyly, but doesn't actually have syndactyly that they're talking about up here. This unusually a person who has the defective allele responsible does not always show the trait. This is one of those. So individual 2-5 has the genotype little n, little n. That is not true. Um, we know it's not true. We can put a cross beside that. What about the second one? Individual 2-4 and 2-5 may have the same genotype. So here's 2-4. Sorry, that's not it. 2-4 and 2-5 we've just worked out. Well, 2-4, of course, must have got a little n from her mum. And dad has the genotype big N something. Um, so there's a 50% chance, in fact, that 
this man could have given the big N to her. Now, it's possible that she could be big N, little N, and, and be another one of these people who, who has the allele for syndactyly but doesn't show it. It's also possible that she got a little N from dad and she's little N, little N. We just can't really know. But it is reasonable, isn't it, to say that these two may, because it just says that they may have the same genotype. It's reasonable to conclude that they may have the same genotype. So we could put a tick beside that one. It seems reasonable. Okay. What about um, the next one? Individuals two, individual two one. That's this guy here. Individual two one has the genotype big N little N. Well, no, we've decided that the genotype here must be little n, little n, because there's no history of syndactyly in his family. So we're going to say that that's not a reasonable suggestion um, based on what they've told us. And finally, individuals 3, 2 and 3, 5, so that's 3, 2, this one, and 3, 5, this one, may have different genotypes. Well, we've worked out what the genotype of this one must be already. This one here must have at least one big N, um, or else she wouldn't have syndactyly. But if her dad has the genotype little n, little n, then she must have an, a little n allele, which means that her genotype is exactly the same as two fives, not different. And so that's, a, that's not a reasonable suggestion. So the most reasonable of these, um, of these choices, whoops, is, uh, I meant to pick up the eraser, the most reasonable is this one here. Um, that these two individuals may have the same genotype. But that was a pretty tough question, wasn't it? A fun one, but a tough one.